Hey, what's up, church family? Pastor Chad here, and I want to welcome you today. To those of you joining us from all across the world, I want to say ohayo to our missionary families in Japan, the Arakakis and the Lambs. We love you guys. We miss you. I love seeing, interacting with you on the chat every week. And, and I want to say welcome to those of you who are joining us for the very first time as well. I believe that God has a special word just for you here today. And you're not here by accident. And, and those of you here on Oahu, I want to ask you, how are you hanging in there, right? With this whole stay-at-home order and the lockdown. Man, let's continue to stay safe and stay healthy in this time. But, but speaking of this lockdown, let me ask you a question as we start. What's your level of frustration right now? And put it on a scale from 1 to 10, 10 being like super duper frustrated. How frustrated have you been these last few months? And I mean, I don't know about you, but for me, the last seven or eight months seem like they have been some of the most frustrating in recent memory. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like we saw a ray of light or whenever we got to see just a glimmer of hope, like I talked about last week, it was taken away from us. And the worst for me was when everything opened up for just a little while, and I thought we might be getting back to some sort of normalcy, right? It was like uh, one week I could go to the beach and I could enjoy it with my, my wife and my kids. And, and the next week it was like I couldn't do any of those things, right? And little things like running to a retail store to pick something up that I needed. I wasn't able to do that. Nothing against Target, but, but what about when Target was able to open up and Costco and places like that, but other small businesses were not able to do the same thing? And then, of course, there's the infamous one-person rule, right? Where, where we could go to the park or we could go to the beach, but we had to do it by ourselves. And I, I don't know about you, but I kept thinking about the Alvin and the Chipmunk song. You know which one? Lonely, I'm so lonely. You know that one? Things didn't seem to make sense, and I found myself just super frustrated. Was any of that happening for you? And the longer that this pandemic seems to be going on, the more I hear the very real stories from family and friends of mine who are struggling like never before through this season. And I don't just get frustrated, but I find myself getting actually weak and weary. You know what I'm talking about? Like this whole season has just zapped the strength right out of me. And I think if, if we're being honest, all of us would say, yeah, the frustration, Chad, has been super real in this season. And one way or another, it can be easy to feel like we've lost a lot of our strength. Isn't that true? And so the question becomes, how do we combat that? What do we do about it? Or do we just walk around being angry and frustrated all the time? And so for many of us, maybe we've been trying our best in whatever way that we can to find our strength once again. And maybe for you, it looks like an addiction, right? I live not too far from Tamura's Fine Wine and Liquor Store, and I'll tell you that I've noticed that their parking lot has been awfully full in recent weeks and months during this pandemic. And not only that, but statistically, liquor sales have skyrocketed in this time. And maybe you've been trying to find your strength at the bottom of a bottle. Or maybe others of us are, are distracting ourselves with shows on, on Netflix or on Disney+, Plus, just binge watching until the end of a season or the end of a series. And then we come right back to the place where we feel empty and frustrated again. And others of us, we're just checking out, right? We're, we're sleeping a lot more than we used to. It's just getting kind of depressing to watch the things around us happen. And whatever it is that you typically combat your frustration with, I want to tell you that I totally understand the struggles of this season. Listen, nobody, nobody is immune to the frustrations that come with this pandemic but I believe that there is one thing that we all need a little bit more of. One thing, one thing that will help us get our strength back and fight off all of this frustration. And I want to focus us on that one thing today. And this is it right here. It's joy. That's right. Joy. 
And we all need joy, right? Maybe some of us need higher levels of it than others, but we all need something to laugh at or something to smile about. Isn't that true? And I know for me personally, I'm someone who thrives on joy, okay? I'm the person who will do things just simply to put a smile on someone else's face or make them laugh or even just to make myself laugh. And to be honest, that's why I grew out this mustache right here, right? One day I looked in the mirror and it just made me laugh. And I noticed that it brought a smile, it brought some joy to the faces of not just me, but people around me as well. And love it or hate it, man, if you think it looks great right now, you should have seen it last week. Take a look at this picture right here. And I believe that if we're going to make it out of this season, you and I are going to need more joy. And so here's the main point of my talk today. I want, I want you to lean into this point. Come on, write this down. Put it in the chat. Say it to the person next to you. It's this right here. Choose joy choose joy. And I want to explain what I mean when I say choose joy, because I get it, man. In 2020, that is way easier said than done. In fact, it was super hard writing this message because telling someone to choose joy who's facing the things that we're facing this year, it almost seems like it can be insensitive at times. But, but let me explain. See, most of us think that the word joy and the word happiness are the same thing. But I want to challenge that thought today. See, true joy is not the same as happiness. Happiness is based on things going well for us externally. Happiness is an emotion that's usually connected with pleasure or satisfaction based on our circumstances. The only problem with that is what happens when our circumstances aren't going very well, right? Things go well, Chad happy. Things go bad, Chad mad, right? And see, if we mix up joy and happiness, we can see our circumstances as something that actually steals the joy out of us. And I recently put a poll out on Instagram and I asked people, what steals your joy? What steals your joy? And I got so many responses about the government and schools being closed or schools being opened or depression, anxiety, losing our jobs, all kinds of answers about things that steal people's joy. But, but what if those were things that could steal our happiness, but we could still choose joy? And what if our joy actually had nothing to do with us, nothing to do with you and me, at all, but had everything to do with our God. See, this is how I believe the Bible defines joy. That biblical joy is choosing to recognize what God has done for us. And let me say that again. Biblical joy is choosing to recognize what God has done for us. See, if we use that definition, Choosing joy then would mean that no matter what was happening around us, no matter how frustrating things get or, or what the circumstances might be, we can choose joy by choosing to recognize what God has done for us in our lives. And joy actually becomes less focused on me and you, less focused on our problems, and joy actually becomes more focused on our God. And at this point, you can either say amen or you can say ouch. You know what I'm talking about? But, but how do I know this? You say, Chad, how do you know that? Well, over and over again, as I study the Bible, as I open up scripture, we see examples of people who are facing some of the worst circumstances possible. But then they somehow talk about experiencing this pure joy. See, for them... Tough circumstances were not the thing that stole their joy. It was actually the thing that became a catalyst for it. And I think about what James writes to the church in James chapter 1, verses 2 and 3, where James encourages believers with this. He says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds. Why? Why, James? Why would we do that? Well, verse 3 says, Because you know that the testing of your faith 
produces perseverance. See, there was this understanding that trials and tribulations were actually a good thing. It actually brought joy knowing that their faith would mature, knowing that they were getting closer and closer, deeper and deeper in their relationship with Jesus. And I get it, man. That sounds crazy, right? And to the world outside, it actually seems like it is crazy, right? But the question for, if you're a believer today, I got to ask you is, is, do we believe what the Bible says? Do we believe it? That we can face things like COVID-19 or, or financial hardships and family issues and relational tensions and bad days at work or bad days at home or, or we can face our addictions and we can actually experience, as we're facing them, we actually experience this joy in Christ. Another person I think of is the Apostle Paul who wrote over half of the New Testament, right? And, and over and over again, he would be beaten, he would be arrested and falsely accused. And, and from prison, Paul would say things like, rejoice in the Lord always. And he would write that while he was literally in chains in prison. And I think the, the greatest example of choosing joy, despite his circumstances, is our Lord Jesus Christ. And Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, it says that, that for the joy that was set before him, Jesus endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. See, all of these people, they chose joy. And they chose it despite what was happening around them or even what was happening to them. See, their joy was, was in and it was focused on God. And, and here's the coolest part. You know, earlier when I mentioned about our strength being zapped from us in this season. Yeah, so in Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10, uh, the people are getting uh, upset. They're getting sad. They're getting mad when they, when they come face to face with how hard life is for them. And how they were missing the mark according to God's standard. And I love this verse because Nehemiah tells them that the joy of the Lord is their strength. The joy of the Lord actually becomes the thing that strengthens them. And what does that mean? Right? What does that mean for us? That when, when we choose joy, just like they did, and we choose to focus on turning and recognizing how God is moving in, the, in their lives and in our lives, it actually becomes this replenishing of our strength. And how many of us could use that in this season? And so I think the question becomes, how do you and I participate in this? How, how do we experience, Chad, how do I experience this pure joy that goes beyond any type of happiness that we can feel. How do you and I choose joy today? And the one thing that I know, the one thing that I know when it comes to choosing joy and the joy of the Lord becoming my strength and your strength is that we need to fight for it. And listen, with everything going on and all the distractions happening in our world right now, you and I really need to fight to focus our joy on God. And rather than just tell you what that looks like or, or give you three simple steps this week for how you can choose joy, right? I, I want to show you what it looks like. I want to read a letter from a member of our church uh, that I get to walk with alongside of personally. And, and recently they sent this letter detailing how they choose joy and fight for it. They fight for their joy in the Lord, despite the pain of this pandemic season. And I want to read it to you now. This is what, it, it's what they wrote. It says, I, I thank God for this pandemic. I find myself in disbelief and really surprised for saying that after all that has happened these past several months. If I'm being real, at first it was great watching Netflix and YouTube and and staying home almost felt like a vacation. But then things started to settle in and got real for me 
really fast. I've lost a loved one. My family was being torn apart through internal drama. I struggled through my addiction, trying to balance and pivot how work and life operates now. I navigated through my own depression, anxiety, and tarnished past. And, and worst of all, I couldn't see my church family due to these restrictions. And, and during these times, it was difficult for me to wake up and get my day started. The negativity of everything was getting to me. But because of all the struggles, it led me back to God. I was doing my devotions one day on Isaiah 6, 9 through 10, and these verses couldn't have described any better how hurt, difficulty, and struggle all lead back to Him. I could feel God calling me, and I'm so thankful I said yes to growing my intimacy and relationship with Him. I started diving into His Word more intently and, and reading books on how to better understand and recover from my addiction and even going back to the heart of why I worship God. And I slowly began to feel more of His peace, healing power, faithfulness, and joy. The more I pressed into Him, the more I found His victory in my life. He is the constant peace to this constantly changing world. I guess that's what James meant when he said to count it all joy in the middle of our trials. My joy is in my intimate relationship with my God. Thank you, God, for being the joy in my life. I don't know if you can relate to that letter at all, but, but I know this person personally and, and they walked through a really tough season the last seven or eight months losing someone that was close family member to them. And, and many of us would understand that when we lose a family member, the tension that often happens in families created this rift and this divide inside of the family. And managing the stress of that with the stress of work, with the stress of a personal life and addictions and things of that sort, they ended up coming back, right back to the place of, man, the joy of the Lord is actually the thing that gives me my strength. They chose joy. And I get it. It's, it's hard in this season. I could personally share story after story about how hard it's been for me as well. Nobody, again, nobody's immune. But, but family, we need to fight to choose joy. I want to read you one more scripture this week. You're saying, Chad, how do I do that? How do I fight for? How do I choose joy in my life? I'll read you this scripture. It comes out of Psalm 16. Psalm chapter 16 and verse 11, it says, You make known to me the path of life. In your presence is the fullness of joy. At your right hand are the pleasures forevermore. If I can give you one thing to do this week, I want to encourage all of us, myself included, right, to sit in the presence of God. That's how we choose joy. And that's where the joy of the Lord will become our strength. And imagine with me, as we close today, imagine with me, if you and I began to do that, and we began to strengthen ourselves up in the joy of the Lord, and we were able to then begin to pass that off to family members, to friends, just to encourage them. We don't want to, we're not trying to preach to them. Listen, we get it. It's a tough season, but man, can I give you this joy that I have in my God? Imagine that we started to become the people that Jesus used to change the world in this season of trial and strength. Would you pray with me? Yeah, Father, we come before you in Jesus' name, Lord, and I just thank you today that over and over again in your word, you provide us with examples of people who found joy in your presence. They chose joy, they fought for joy despite their circumstances, God. And if they could do it, Father, that means that you're calling us to do it as well, that I can do that this week. And so God, I'm praying for every person who's watching this right now, Father, that, that you would begin to reveal to them that happiness and joy are separate. Man, things might not give us happiness today, but that's all right because our joy 
can still come from you. And Father, would you remind us of that this week? Would you show us what it looks like to fight for joy in your presence? Would you help us to find spaces and places to, to get into your word, to commune, to talk story with you, God, to, to, to love on somebody, to love my neighbor, to love you, God, as I love others. And Father, I just pray that we would be able, we would be a people who would be able to experience more pure joy in this season, that we would become your church who chooses joy and then is able to release that joy into our families, into our schools, into our workplaces, into our marriages, our relationships, our friendships, our homes. God, I pray that that would be the mark of our church and your church, Father, your bride. In Jesus' name I pray. And all God's people said a great big amen. Amen.